Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as usual, my channel works with personality type theories, anagram type, as well as psychology to really help you to understand yourself more and also to facilitate growth and healing. This is a self-development channel and I also have personality type themed merchandise that is based on the 16 personality type that you can check out in the description box below to find the one that reflects your personality type and you can also buy me a coffee and follow me on IG at personality story. So that's all for the introduction. I want to get into today's topic that is a really important one. It's about how to balance the use of feeling and thinking functions when it comes to moving on from a certain relationship whether it is a working relationship or, you know, a friendship or like a romantic relationship. I think that when people hear the word relationship, they always think about, you know, dating and all that. But actually, relationship is anything, right? It's, it's really like our relationship with another person, right? So that's really uh, all-encompassing in a sense. And we can be, you know, deeply impacted by a relationship with anybody. We can be deeply impacted by a relationship of a family member, with friends, with colleagues, with um, people we've worked with and worked under, all of that, right? So, you know, especially when you have had a really huge, you know, negative experience or something that just doesn't seem to have a very healthy, you know, closure, how do you actually go about getting through it right without falling to pretending you are okay or, or pretending to move on without actually you know going through that the things that have to be gone through and i think this is right a very overlooked um topic in today's world because uh we really do a lot of like suppression of emotions which is the first part i'm going to be talking about it's like we either you know, uh, when it comes to feeling and thinking, we are either told to just keep, you know, validating how we feel and, and getting into the spiral and um, never really knowing how to get out of it. Or there's also the other extreme where we are told to just move on and then, you know, be independent. And you see this kind of rhetoric. Of course, it's the, the later, it's more like uh, common for men where people are told to just, you know, be brave and, and man up and like be like you know uncaring and, and just like numb yourself right but then it's also like increasingly present in uh, women's groups right and, and on social media where uh, we are told like oh we are so independent we don't need anybody like nobody can hurt us we can just like you know go to work and forget about it and learn, earn our degrees and and um you know use achievements to sort of like speak for ourselves and we don't need to you know, think about what has hurt us. And I think both kinds of rhetorics are actually um, doing more harm to, than good because it's, it's a form of like not acknowledging that at the end of the day, we are human beings and it's very normal to feel hurt after any form of, you know, relationship, um, whether it's like work related or, you know, um, family related or friendship related etc so when we suppress our emotions this is a, a case of not balancing the feeling and thinking functions because we have all the functions right essentially yes we do have functions that we value more and functions that we are more in, in touch with um, depending on our personality type in the 16 personality model and also depending on our own experiences right how we are taught at home how we are taught in school how society has basically um you know programmed us in a way but um you know by suppressing our emotions right this which is a way that a lot of people use right to move on you never actually get to move on because when we don't allow ourselves to feel we are denying a very human part of us right and this is something that i've noticed um, in men and also in some women and also in myself right because 
when we don't acknowledge our emotions, we end up like we can, you know, go move on to another person. We can move on through, you know, many friendships or many jobs, and we will still be carrying around that resentment because we never really got through. And I think the best illustration for this is this short story that I recently read. It's got it's called Kino. I think that's how it's pronounced. It's a short story in uh, this Haruki Murakami's um, short story book called Men Without Women. And of, of course, true to the title, right? This is about a man who was, you know, deeply hurt in a relationship with a, with a woman who um, has kind of, you know, had an affair and um, he didn't allow himself to feel, right? He was like, you know, I, I don't feel anything. I don't know if I'm hurt. I don't know if I'm like feeling any kind of way. And he sort of like went along his day just feeling numb. And he was surviving, you know, he was functioning, he was able to make a living. But then this, this like disaster sort of struck, right, out of nowhere. And Murakami does a lot of magic realism. So I know it, it's a bit hard to understand for people who are not like into Murakami. But basically, he started seeing this like really ominous signs happening around his shop. And like there were snakes and there were like weird weather patterns. And, and a guy started to tell him to, you know, get away from, from his... Uh, you know, his bar that he worked at. And all these were actually um, a symbolism, right, of, of him running away from his feelings. And as a result, it's like whatever that you're pushing away is going to come back to haunt you. And that, that's basically the theme of the story. It's like, you know, you can pretend, you can pretend you don't have any emotions, but it never really worked because we are human beings at the end of the day, right? And you know, I, I've met men, right, who are still, you know, hung up on their ex, like 20 years, um, who are, you know, taught that they have to push away their emotions. And now with women, you know, uh, adopting this kind of masculine model as well in the whole like hyper independent movement, we're taught to like shove our feelings down and use work and use like other kind of distractions. And that never really worked because why else would the guys you know, be talking about their ex 20 years later, right? And that's because they were angry and they were also hurt because anger is a form of hurt and they never acknowledged that they were deeply hurt in that encounter. So it only will come up when probably every few like experience there will be something that remind you of the previous one. So what is really essential in the whole like moving forward process is really being very honest with yourself how do you feel okay and this is very difficult because once again our culture today doesn't really celebrate feelings right we, we don't celebrate the idea for both men and women i would say we don't want to be the one to admit that we were deeply hurt and uh whether it's like any kind of relationship we just don't want to pre um acknowledge that we have feelings like we want to just pretend like you know what, I have moved on, like I'm, I'm doing great and I have someone else now and all that. And this is like, this is honestly just, you know, the, the mass um, charade, I would say. It's, it's like everybody is pretending, right? And um, as a result, nobody can actually move on because um, moving on requires a very honest introspection and very honest, you know, emotional process because we are you know, human beings at the end of the day. So really um, how you can start in this process is to be 100% true to yourself. Like if you feel hurt, you admit to yourself. Like I feel hurt, right? Because this happened or I feel angry because this happened or I feel, you know, scared because this happened. It's like all the emotions that you have felt. Like you are able to express it in a of course in a safe environment like not not saying that you should you know express this hurt um to some stranger or you know express this hurt in, in like situations where you're making someone else feel uncomfortable but you know it can be in the privacy of your own room it can be in your journals it can be through music it can be through your own like crying or i don't know like some kind of exercise where you are able to release some of the you know, anger or sadness and you don't, you don't like st 
stop yourself from emitting any emotion because sometimes we can use anger to to sort of hide from our hurt right like we are like oh i'm angry all the time but actually i am also sad right that this happened so it's also like not using one emotion to like you know mask the other emotion and that requires a lot of like use of the feeling function in a healthy way um, some people may call it like the healthy use of introverted feeling and I think that's also a part of it like you don't need to actually have introverted, introverted feeling in your stack to be able to appreciate the use of FI right in a healthy way like you are able to label your emotions and feel them and you know allow yourself to get through to them in, in a way that is safe for you and for other people um, and then after that, right, of course, like allowing yourself some time to, to grieve and to be angry. Of course, you don't want to also like go to the other extreme where you are constantly, you know, feeling hurt and, and feeling like a victim and just um, never getting out of your emotions, right? Because that is, again, a form of imbalance, right? You are like, oh, I'm always, you know, crying and hurt and and. There is like no end to this, right? So that's when the logical side of things come in. So the logical side of things is like when you use your logical function, right? Whether it is introverted thinking or extroverted thinking and you use it in a way that is constructive. So what I mean by that is you are able to step back, right? After you have, you know, dumped your anger or your sadness in your own room some in some way or the other or, or by writing um, you are able to look back at the situation in a more like detached way right in a more like a distance way and be very like analytical about it it's sort of like you know um, what have I done right in this situation that has contributed to the outcome right and this is not in a way of like self-blame. This is not like blaming you uh, for having certain things happen. It's more like being honest and taking accountability because always, right, when we are in a situation, we are a part of the situation, right? So what exactly have we done, right, that has contributed to this outcome, right? So whether it's the ending of a friendship or the ending of a relationship or a work experience, like... There has to be some things that we were doing as well or the things that we were allowing that has led to the outcome. And then you ask yourself why, right? Because of these past experiences that caused me to have, um, you know, maybe negative beliefs about myself or negative beliefs about my circumstances. So I didn't believe that I could get what I want. Um, it, it might sound a bit like triggering to some people or, or it might... Some people might not want to hear it at this time. And back then, I probably wouldn't want to hear it either because I was having really bad experiences. But now when I look back, you know, I'm like, because of this one bad experience, like that was a wake-up call, it really accelerated my growth and it accelerated my um, awareness of myself to the point where I can go for the things that I want to go for because I realized the alternative is way worse, right? It's like, I can't allow myself to be trapped in this anymore and I know that I am important enough now upon like having all those reflections about the beliefs that have limited me and I'm able to really go very far like further than I thought was possible because of that bad experience with certain people in my life and so now from like a distance I can actually see the things that I've learned and even feel um, a sense of gratitude towards the experience. And and again, this is not something that you have to force yourself to feel, right? And, and it takes time to really get to this point. So you don't have to feel bad if you're not at this point yet and, and you're still maybe in the angry phase or the sad phase. But really, it's like, um, you know, at the end of the day, right, after the whole like logical analysis and how you can learn from it and move forward and basically take ownership, right, of your life and where you're going. And at the end of it, right, you, you tap into your feeling function again, where you allow yourself to feel 
positive emotions as well because nothing is really black and white, right? I mean, an experience can be both good and bad and a person can be both good and bad. And most people are not like purely, you know, angel or devil, right? There are always good moments, like even in, in the worst experiences that I've been through, right? At least speaking for myself, um, there are always positive um, attributes of that person and positive attributes of that experience that I still remember, that I still value. So, you know, after going through that, that like logical part, I'm able to return to my emotions and allow myself to also see the great things, right, about, about that particular, you know, relationship that has ended and to note to myself that even though um, logically I know that you know, whatever that happened in the past was not right for me and, you know, uh, and I would, you know, do things differently moving forward and, you know, sometimes that involves me never meeting the same person again or moving away from a certain crowd um, but it doesn't mean that I have to be super angry about it, right? Because there are still great things that I have learned and also great memories in, in some Shape, way shape or form that have come out of it so I'm able to really look at it from like a holistic point of view and to feel the positive um, emotions as well um, and not limiting myself in that regard and I find that when when I reach this stage right which is the last stage really I'm able to really let go of the whole like anger and resentment and I don't hold anything um against the people you know in, in those experiences anymore because I feel like they were also a part of the journey um, of course this is like speaking from you know a few years later when I looked at it again so I'm hoping that my my process of, of balancing feelings and you know um, thinking um, can help you in your journey and can help you to have a more balanced way of processing loss or grief or negativity in your relationships and i'll see you in the next video bye